Hello everyone, my name is David Lee. In this video, we'll be talking about what is educational technology or ed tech, how you can categorize different types of ed tech experiences, how to facilitate transformative learning with technology, and finally, what is, in my opinion, one of the best teaching approaches that complement effective and meaningful integration of technology. So let's begin. This is a complicated question to answer because EdTech can mean so many different things. EdTech can involve a wide range of things like learning management systems, digital tools and media, ICT, information and communications technology, or even tech infrastructure in a school, which involves the Wi-Fi, the devices that the students and teachers are using, and data, privacy, and security. That's a wide range of technology being used in education. For simplicity, I use a definition um, that I like to refer to when talking to educators about ed tech. Here's the definition. Educational technology is the study and ethical practice of facilitating learning and improving performance by creating, using, and managing appropriate technological processes and resources. So in schools, ed tech is the use of tech and tech processes to facilitate learning and improve performance. So like I said before, EdTech can involve a wide range of learning experiences that integrate technology. I think a great way to categorize EdTech learning experiences is by identifying the learning theory behind the whole experience. Learning theories are the ideas that attempt to describe how humans learn. You can categorize these EdTech learning experiences through three broad learning theories. Behaviorism, Cognitivism, and Constructivism. Each of these theories provide different perspectives on teaching and learning. Looking at how tech facilitates learning through the lenses of these theories. Let's go ahead and discuss what each of these theories are all about and the perspectives of each theory regarding ed tech. Behaviorism is a theory of learning that is based on the idea that all behaviors are acquired through conditioning. Now within this theory, there is something called operant conditioning, where a behavior is learned through a stimulus, which leads to a response, and then the stimulus that follows that response. B.F. Skinner, a behaviorist, implemented the operant uh, conditioning into academic learning, uh, which is called programmed instruction. This type of instruction involves the use of a mechanical device, a teaching machine, that provides stimuli to students and additional reinforcers based on their responses. Behaviorism-based tech is very popular in ed tech because it helps students increase their performance in tests. For example, apps and other online platforms break down learning into smaller sections, each section requiring students to respond to stimuli and then getting immediate feedback. Let's take a look at Khan Academy, an example of behaviorism-based tech. Khan Academy is a website that provides free online courses, lessons, and practice exercises. Its mission is to provide a free, world-class education for everyone, everywhere. Here you can search for expert content in any topic, watch videos on that topic, and do some practice exercises. It even has something called Mission Warm-Up, where students can do a few problems so that Khan Academy knows how to help the students, identifying what he or she knows or doesn't know, so that it can provide appropriate stimuli, guided practice, at the student's level. Its dashboard tracks the student's progress, identifying what the student mastered or what they need to work on. This website is a great example of how operant conditioning works in education, identifying the level of the students, providing adaptive stimuli that elicits responses and immediate feedback, helping students practice at their own pace and be an active participant in their own learning. Cognitivism is a learning theory that focuses on how information is received, organized, stored, and retrieved by the mind, focusing more on the mental processes, kind of like a computer. In education, cognitivism uh, focuses on how information is presented, um, how things are organized in sequence so that it's easier to understand and remember. First catching their attention, then helping them to make sense of the information that was given, um, and then stored to build up their mental maps. In educational technology, this could involve the presentation of information through visual learning, auditory learning, and digital multimedia. Visual learning is learning through visuals that follow perception principles to help students better focus on important information, 
Auditory learning is where students learn based on hearing. And digital multimedia is digital content that uses multiple mediums to communicate information. Constructivism is difficult to define because of the um, diverse meanings behind the term. But the commonality between these diverse views is that there's the belief that knowledge is constructed by learners as they attempt to make sense of their experiences. Within these constructivism-based learning experiences, there are prescriptive principles that they follow. According to Marcy Driscoll, a professor at Florida State University College of Education, these prescriptive principles are the following. Embedded learning in complex, realistic, and relevant environments. Provide for social negotiation as an integral part of learning. Support multiple perspectives and the use of multiple modes of representation. Encourage ownership in learning. And finally, nurture self-awareness of the knowledge construction process. So after examining the three learning theories, uh, you can see that uh, the use of ed tech can look very different depending on the learning theory behind it. But at the same time, all application of ed tech should facilitate learning in one shape or form. In 2016, ISTE, an education nonprofit organization who's committed to empowering connected learners in a connected world, introduced their new tech standards for students. These standards identified what students would be able to do uh, with technology. For example, students use a variety of technologies within a design process to identify and solve problems by creating new, useful, or imaginative solutions. The new tech standards focuses on facilitating transformative learning, a roadmap to transformative learning uh, that emphasizes on empowering student voice and student agency. These standards give students a new role in learning, more self-directed learning and giving them more responsibility and ownership. And teachers are also seen more as facilitators uh, who provide guidance in learner-driven experiences. Here are the seven ISTE standards. Empowered learner using tech to demonstrate competency in their learning goals. Digital citizen, using tech in a safe, legal, and ethical way. Knowledge constructor, using tech to construct knowledge and produce creative products. Innovative designer, using tech to solve problems by creating solutions. Computational thinker, using tech to implement strategies for solving problems to develop and test solutions. Creative Communicator Using tech to communicate clearly and express themselves creatively. Global Collaborator Using tech to broaden perspectives and collaborate with others, locally and globally. Within these standards, there are substandards that specify exactly what students will be able to do. In 2015, I was asked to do a, a day-long workshop on ed tech for an international school. Um, I thought I was going to have them try out some new tech, some new apps, and um, some online tools, but I ended up not doing that. I felt like tech integration was most effective when it was complemented by a great uh, teaching approach. So I decided to teach project-based learning to the educators. The title of my workshop was actually Project-Based Learning, Where Effective Technology Integration Happens. I feel like project-based learning provides students with one cohesive learning experience where they can use technology um, through the lens of all three learning theories, as well as develop their skills um, that are involved in the new ISTE standards. Project-based learning or PBL is a teaching method in which students learn by actively engaging in real world and personally meaningful projects. According to PBL Works, a leading organization in making PBL accessible to schools. There are seven essential PBL elements. Challenging problem or question, sustained inquiry, authenticity, student voice and choice, reflection, critique and revision, and public showcase. Let's take a look at a PBL example. Fourth graders were asked the following challenging question. How will you design a mechanical float for a festival? This project provided students with an authentic context involving real-world tasks and tools. 
Students went through sustained inquiry of asking questions, investigating, and finding the resources needed to gain crucial knowledge and skills from multiple subject areas, world language, social studies, science, and engineering. They then applied what they learned to produce a mechanical float model that was displayed publicly for an audience beyond their own class. During the process of designing and prototyping their festival floats, students were providing one another feedback, as well as eliciting feedback to then improve their float models. During this whole project, students made some decisions on how they worked and what they created. Let's now look at possible uses of educational technology to facilitate learning in this project through the lens of the three learning theories. Students using digital tools like G Suite to facilitate collaborative activities during the investigation process. Students using digital learning journals like Seesaw to document their learning as well as reflect on their learning, developing self-awareness of their learning, knowledge construction process, and encouraging ownership in learning. Students programming microcontrollers and building mechanical robots to bring authenticity to the learning context, as well as create a realistic, hands-on learning environment. It also provides opportunities for complex problem solving and collaborative learning that involves social negotiation. Students using digital game-based learning tools that incorporate drill and practice to increase their knowledge in the required subject areas of the project. Students using computer-assisted instruction like BrainPop that provide explanations on different content topics and a quiz at the end with immediate responses. Teachers using presentation tools like Apple's Keynote to easily present information with clarity through the use of visual learning principles. Teachers using digital multimedia tools like Flipgrid to present information through text, photos, and interactive whiteboards to show multiple representations of content. It is important to note that the use of EdTech tools can fall under multiple learning theories. Okay, so how do the ISTE standards fit in this learning experience? Well, students use the Seesaw app to set and achieve learning goals, demonstrate their learning through the construction of their festival float, and use their understanding of concepts of tech operations to program their microcontroller and its components. They also used online resources to research and curate crucial information to answer the project's question. They went through the design process to generate ideas, develop prototypes, and test and refine them. And of course, they used their understanding of an algorithmic thinking to create code that automated their festival floats. So to recap this video, we discussed the definition of educational technology, which is the study and ethical practice of facilitating learning and improving performance by creating, using, and managing appropriate technological processes and resources. We also talk about how the use of ed tech could be categorized based on the learning theory of the learning experience. How there is a focus in recent years to use ed tech to facilitate transformative learning and how project-based learning is a teaching approach that complements effective technology integration into learning experiences. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of what educational technology is all about. Um, until next time, peace.